Hi guys, welcome to the Pipe Fitness channel. This is the first in a series of exercise tutorials. Uh, we're going to look at lots of different exercises throughout the series, but today we're going to start with the kettlebell swing. I use this with virtually all of my clients um, and would really recommend it to almost anyone um, as the, can the benefits of it uh, are really wide ranging in terms of glute development, increased strength in the posterior chain, improved function in the lower back, glutes and hips, fat burning potential is great, uh, improving CV fitness, um, learning to absorb and redirect force, so many many benefits, just a really great exercise all around. It has great uh, carryover potential into our big lifts such as deadlifts, squats and lunges. Use it for higher reps for conditioning and lower reps with a heavier bell for building strength. We want our stance slightly wider than shoulder width, feet facing about 10 to 15 degrees outward and we're going to set up about 10 to 18 inches behind the bell. You can see that I've bent forward at the hips primarily. I've allowed a slight bend at the knee so that I can sit my hips right back. Um, I take in a grip of the bell, draw my shoulders back and down, that is to keep my upper back in a neutral position and also to activate my lats. The next thing that I'm going to be doing is taking a big hike between my legs. You can see that when I pull the kettlebell up I take it high up into the groin with the outside of my wrist actually making contact with the insides of my thighs just below the groin area. I absorb the force that I've created by pulling the bell back between my legs um, and as I stand up tall I redirect that force by snapping my hips through, standing up tall, contracting the glutes with locked out knees and hips. At the top of the swing the finishing position of the bell doesn't really want to be much above 90 degrees. I then guide the bell back down in between my legs to that high groin position, absorb that force and just go through and repeat the movement. So I'm driving my hips through, standing up nice and tall, getting that bell swinging in a pendulum fashion. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is point out some of the common errors that I see. In the background, I'm just going to continue doing more sets. I'm going to do some single hand sets as well so you can see what that looks like. Um, right, error number one, too much bending at the knee and not enough bending forward at the hip. Sometimes, a lot of the time you see this, if you're feeling it on your quads then you're probably breaking too much at the knee and you need to prioritize more of a hip hinge movement than a squat position with the knee bend. The second problem I see is people using their shoulders to move the kettlebell into the top position. The only reason the kettlebell is flying up is because of your hip drive through, not your shoulders. So that your arms are just holding on to the bell, you're not performing a front raise. And the final problem that I often see is an overextension in the top position. Position. This is common in deadlifts as well and often people will uh, want to bend all the way back creating a lot of tension in the lower back, really the lower back taking over to create that hip thrust and you're really not activating the glutes in a sort of maximal way as you would want to. So in that top position you're just nice and straight, no overextension of the lower back and that's your final position. Okay so that's it for today, um, I hope this tutorial has helped you to understand a bit more about the kettlebell swing and maybe next time you're in the gym pick up that kettlebell, swing it around, hopefully you can use some of the tips we've learned today in this video and and uh, leave a comment and a like at the bottom of the page and let us know how you got on. See you next time for more video tutorials with Pike Fitness.